Alan? But being number one wasn't easy. The company had to keep up with the times and make the magic as modern as possible. So they brainstormed and consulted and came up with a plan. <laughs> they decided to build the world's most magical roller coaster. Um, come February, we'll run a teaser campaign, okay? And um, we'll run that for a couple of weeks. What we'll do is we won't associate it with Alton Towers in any way. It'll just be establishing the brand, the colorways, and the icon. And then from the start of March, that effectively is the date when we'll release it to the world. Clear the area, please. Clear the area, please. It would be a roller coaster for the late 90s. Cool, modern, very millennium. The new ride for next year is um, something that's it's quite unusual, um, and to say the least, we're extremely excited about it. What it is, the ride in essence is a very simple proposition because it's the world's first vertical drop roller coaster. Um, and that sounds fairly scary, but it's sort of technically incredibly challenging. There's a, a lot of instances in the world at the moment where coasters have got sort of uh, fairly steep drops, but um, there are no coasters where it literally goes completely vertical. What the ride will do, it's a fairly straightforward ride. You go up to a very high point, about 100 foot above ground. You will hang on the edge, on the precipice, for about three seconds or so, um, and then you will vertically plunge. The ride's called Oblivion, um, because we, we debated the ride name for an awful long time, but uh, Oblivion is the state of being forgotten. And when you drop off that edge, you'll feel very much like uh, you're about to drop into this an enor enormous hole uh, and you're into the state of being forgotten at a terrifying rapid pace, which, uh, which should get a few people going. The time is not yet right. Everyone was excited. They knew something was being built, but no one knew what it was or what it would be called. That information is classified. Please clear the area. Operative 242 to security 3. Sector 4. Imminent. Roger. People don't know how incredibly hard it is standing absolutely still. Well, people mill past you and there's noises going on and you can't, you can't interact with them, you can't banter with them, you can't laugh, smile, joke. They didn't want any of that. Clear the area, please. They wanted this, this guy who stood out like a sore thumb, hence the costume. Um, but at the same time, they wanted what was going on behind them to be kept secret. So it was a very hard contrast to hit. Don't touch. The whole ethos of Alton Towers is uh, friendly, personable, do as much as you can for the customer. This is why this is such a complete contrast. You've got to be antisocial, not speak to anybody. Um, sometimes it's very hard to do that because you're so much the opposite way around. They employ people for those qualities. Meanwhile, the new roller coaster was still make believe. An enormous hole in the ground. What, what you see here is a great big piece of civil engineering, which isn't kind of very exciting. Um, what, what we have to do is to turn that into magic. Whoop! We are entertainers. The fact that we use concrete and steel to do our entertaining, as opposed to a piece of Shakespearean text or whatever, is, 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 is immaterial. Next year, this is going to look like a sinister, forbidden place, and no one can really work out what it's all about. You know, there's always a place sort of a few miles away that's got a barbed wire fence around it and a minefield, and you know people that work there and they never tell you what they do, and it's all a bit sinister and a bit secret. Well, that's one of these places, and there's something going on underground, 
and no one knows quite what, or no one will admit that really anything goes on underground. And when you come here, you unwittingly find yourself part of an experiment, and you're taken underground into oblivion. And we're having a great time working all this up at the moment. Access don't climb over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you can say with any clarity is that it's designed by Bollinger and Maviard. You can tell just by the shape of the track section. It's going to be impressive. It's a big hole. High security area. People are really curious because there's not yes. quite enough happening yet to give the game away. No. So there's a big hole and there's a big mound and there's some bits of metal work over there. Um, some of it's obvious, some of it's obviously, obviously structure. Um, looking at it, it's giving some of it's recognisable as to as to who the supplier is, who the manufacturer is. Um, but there's not enough there to to ascertain what's actually going to happen. I mean, there's one straight bit of if that's track, one straight bit of track and a couple of supports. So. It's a nice tease to see a bit of it, but you still can't work out what it, what it, yeah, you still can't work out what it actually is going to be. No. Just have to keep watching this space, I suppose. Keep coming up to this fence. Yeah. But work on Oblivion continued. With no visitors in the park, it was much easier to build the ride in secret. After two years of planning, it was time for the first test run. Having invested twelve million pounds. The directors of the company had come along to see how special the ride really was. We mustn't interfere. Um, let's just obviously wait and see what happens. <laughs> That's exciting to me. It's the first time I've seen it move. Really? <laughs> It'd have better move a lot more than that. <laughs> The members are really getting excited. There's still weeks to go, but I'm getting letter after letter every day and emails and phone calls. People ask me what it is, what's the name, what's the theming. They're really desperate to find out. And I think this, this closed season um, during the winter is really getting to them because they've got nothing else to think about now other than the new ride on the first day of the season. You are on your back, just looking at the sky. I mean, go to the sublime to the ridiculous. One minute you're looking at the sky, and the next minute you're looking straight at the ground. And it's coming up towards you. One person in particular called the Wooden Spectre um, from Sussex is sending me so many letters um, asking me or demanding that I tell him everything. I've got a few here, just. Um, they're all written in stencil, so it's very difficult to read, but silence is not an option. Another one here. You cannot deprive us of what we must know. Well, even if I wanted to tell him, I can't, because he doesn't tell me who he is. I just get his wooden spectre and a postmark of, Su of Sussex. And I've called all the members in Sussex and cross-examined them, and they're all denying it. So I don't know who he is, and he really should save his postage. Um, well, recently, this, this one, quite funny. You went two weeks without abuse. We have gone without details for too long. <laughs> now that's that's the holding point. That's where you'll be held. They can't. They've got no idea. Well, they're not even looking you're straight held, down. They're looking okay. over here. It sounded unbelievably quiet. <laughs> Excellent. God, that was so quiet. Smooth. Very smooth. Very perfect, wasn't it? It's right, isn't it? That's